Madison, Wisconsin, this city we call home, is best known for being an isthmus, for the beauty of our lakes, and for unforgiving winters that transform into splendid summers. Fish fries, cheese curds, and fine cuisine, a state brimming with large-scale agriculture and bite-sized CSA farms, has led to a capital city rich in food culture. Over 2,000 miles away is Sitka, Alaska, a place only accessible by boat or plane. Here, seafood is a livelihood and a restaurant staple. As in Madison, it's near impossible to be disconnected from local producers because more than likely you socialize with one. I'm David Rodriguez, and this is Food for Thought. You were surrounded by the culture and fishing yeah, pretty much your whole from life. A, from an early age, I was on a fishing boat. I was born in Sitka. I grew up a town about 40 miles south of here, in a, what you call a bush community, so off the, off the road. You could have to take a float plane or a boat to get there. Wow. So I spent my summers there, my, and my dad was a commercial fisherman, my mom was on a school schedule, so she, we'd come up in the summers and fish out of there. Marsh Skeel, fisherman, and now full-time fisherman wrangler, is the vice president of Sitka Salmon Shares, a community-supported fishery where 20 fishermen are part of a collective. They supply sustainably caught fish to the Midwest, including Madison. I was at Sitka Salmon Chair's most sustainable fisherman because I didn't catch that many. I kept more in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more valuable as like organizing the fishermen and the, the processing of the fish. Fish is super delicate because somebody just kind of doing a crummy job filleting will make a perfect piece of fish look kind of crummy. Or if yep. it's not frozen really quickly, it's like texturally, yep. it's not going to be as good. It really takes like someone who's really invested there to make sure all the fishermen are happy, the fish are getting through the plant smoothly. I mean, the two most important people to me are the fishermen catching it and how it's handled there and the people buying it. And so we try to like Reduce connect the steps those, between. Yeah, connect those people as closely as possible. Nice, what do you got there, Frank? What we call threading herring. What you're trying to do is get the hook placed just perfectly. So you got a, a plastic flasher that's making a flashing that gets the fish excited and thinks it's like time to eat. And the kind of voodoo behind it is like, how does that herring sit? Does it spin? Does it move around? Do you have it, does it straight? And king salmon are really kind of tricky. They're, they're, they're temperamental. They're, they're kind of spooked easily. And so there's a lot, you know, they're hard to catch. You really have to kind of have perfect bait and perfect gear and get everything just right in order to like, you know, for them to bite. It's, uh, it's very tricky. It is, and it I is. Have years into perfecting <laughs> my technique. I gave up, I gave up because it was too, yeah. Generally, yeah, a lot of, it's, it's hard to do. Trolling. A sustainable approach to salmon fishing involves an intricate dance of cannonballs, outriggers, lines, and girdies. A mastery of timing is needed to pull up the line and hook a single fish onto the boat. Let's go forward. Yep. Chef Dan Fox, owner of Heritage Tavern in Madison, has joined me on this epic fishing journey. Pull all the leader in, it doesn't have to be nicely coiled, you just want it to go down into the tray a little bit. In 2008, Dan decided it wasn't enough just to use local food as a chef, so he learned to farm sustainably, raising heritage pigs. There we go. All right. Oh, really fishing now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's my friend Otter Bill. I'm friends with sea creatures. So then going back down. One, two, three. Stop it. That's it, you're a pro. All right. Nice job, buddy. I'm real impressed. Yeah, well Some that's all work. that matters. We can leave now, I impressed Dan, so. <laughs> what do you got, sublegal? It's a little guy. That one looked, that one looked good. Nice and healthy. Yep. You guys saw a salmon, all right. <laughs> Show's over, wrap it up. So we've been out since four. Yeah. We haven't caught anything other than a, a couple of rockfish and uh, a juvenile 
king salmon. Yep. How often is it that you called that getting skunked? Yep. How often do you get skunked? 100% of the time if you have a film crew. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, this time of year, it just, uh, you know, it's lots of days you don't catch anything and then you just try it out and you head back in. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the summer salmon season, you're never getting skunked. You're always catching something that's sure. busier. But this is a small little area that's that's uh, only open a couple days a week, and it's like pretty hit or miss. So sure. you might catch 20 one day, you might get skunked one day. It's just like try it out. You have to be pretty diligent and just keep fishing every day and so not get dejected because then, you know, next day it could be really good. So Got it. The next hour it could be really good. We could catch a bunch. Sure. You know, right now. You never know. You it's never like know. gambling. It is. Black, black, black. We'll see. The Klingit people were the first fishermen to inhabit Sitka, and they still call this wild place home. Skilled on the ocean, they supplemented their diet by foraging nearby. My friend Alice, better known in Madison as Hip Foodie Mom, is a member of Sitka Salmon Shares. She came to Sitka to have a better appreciation for the collective, and she jumped at the opportunity to forge spruce tips and goose town. So the flavor profile, you chew on some. To me, it's like citrusy, bright. It's kind of like hops, almost. Dice up a bunch of these and throw them in salt, and it, it kind of gets a like almost like green, like fruit loopy, green strawberry flavor, mm. like a maybe fruit roll up. Kefir limey or something. Yeah, that's really good. How much should we gather? Uh, just like a little handful. Cool. I have a lot. I think the best ingredients come from nature. You know, catch your own fish, snorkel for your own, you know, shellfish, gather berries and different wild edibles that really taste of the place. And to me, that's like way more fun. Chefs, you know, it's like getting excited about the next thing, your next season of cooking and what, you know, what's available and like what these incredible flavors you get to cook with. Sure. And now it's just like just pre-summer. So like the berries are about ready to pop. July, August is like everything's going. The salmon are running, the berries are out, the bears are chowing down and everything. Yeah. Hopefully not us, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these are all goose tongue? This is goose tongue. That's fun. They, you know, they're not, they're not just w up in the forest. They, they're like intertidal. So uh -huh. something about them needs this nutrients from the ocean as well. So I called my uh, forager friend to just to verify that these are the exact. Uh, I don't know. You read a book and you feel like, I don't know. You're looking at a picture and like, am I gonna die or not? It's like scary. <laughs> But if someone like shows you, this is how, why it is, this is how it does this, then it's like, okay, I trust that, I can do that. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that's definitely kept me from actively going out and forging. It is difficult to find someone to kind of show you the ropes. I got excited because I thought I'd found a seashelled creature that had been opened by a bird or something, but it's really just a ketchup packet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> gonna to top the list for like cool places I've cooked. Can I get him on this action? Yeah. You wanna leave the tails on? Yeah, I'm leaving the tails on. So we have the black cod. Alright, let's do the shark sweet then. It is top shelf, isn't it? They're gonna like jump out. That'd be pretty cool. So Dan, tell tell me about this sauce you're making, man. Uh shar sweet, it's a just a classic like Chinese barbecue. It's a glaze. Uh do you know that little those little red bits of pork and fried rice? Uh, that's pretty much short sweet. Uh, so we have soy sauce, maple syrup, mirin. You reduce it down to these glazed the fish over and over and over and over again. Super low and so it's typically done with pork and uh, we do it with salmon and this black cat. Kind of like melts in your mouth. Yeah, you probably put like a generous layer right in the bottom just set that skin right on top of it. Oh, okay. We'll put some Wisconsin maple syrup. So what happens like to osmosis, you know, the salt sugar kind of penetrate the maple syrup penetrate into the salmon mm -hmm. it'll relieve water and create like its own it cure. replaces the water yeah okay. yeah like crab box but just like to season it okay and then you're going to kind of rub it together okay seafood really tastes like the environment you know it comes from a spot prawn is not the same as a farmed Thai shrimp that was raised in a mud puddle. If you care about like really delicious things, I mean, it really matters the environment it comes from. 
So I guess we can start looking at fish for the ceviche, huh? Yep. I'd probably use this idiot rockfish. This is a kind of a combo. It's like a Did you call it water. idiot rockfish? Yep. Interesting. Hmm. You want halibut cheeks for that? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd probably mince them up pretty, pretty well. If I can get them in there now, that'll help break them down. Yeah, exactly. The whole thing with this is the glaze tacking on and like penetrating into the fish. And I thought it'd be cool to try the black cod versus the king salmon. King salmon. Yeah, for sure. You know? And then do you mind pulling that fish back a little bit, Marsh, and kind of yep, yep, glazing a little yep. bit? Well, here we are cooking on a campfire. <laughs> Everything's gonna taste like so much better. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Get some smoke on that food. Good job, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Like some salmon. Ooh, look at the spread. And that is how you wing it, folks. This is how we do it. Everything looks so good. Dan's Heritage Bacon. Southern style grits with Wisconsin cheese. King salmon blinis. Dinner is a blend of Midwestern hardiness and the wild Alaskan sea. One on your left is the black cod, uh -huh. and the one on your right is the ivory king salmon. So that was cool, like do the same recipe and try them side by side. Marsh was very excited about the black cod, char -sui. Definitely. It's really hard to over season it. It was really forgiving on the heat. It, it's so oily, it's really imp kind of impossible to overcook. How about to a long and successful day? To a long and successful day. day. <laughs> was today the day that we started at 3 a.m.? <laughs> yeah. Was yeah. that today? That was today. Yeah. Crazy. Do you feel alive right now? I, I do. do. I feel really good. I do actually, on top of this mountain. It's pretty, pretty amazing. I feel like a king. You say there's something unique about uh, Sitka and the flavor that you get out of the waters here as far as? I think the, what makes it special is the, how, how fishermen fish here. It's small boat, it's mostly hook and line, it's owner operator, it's people that care about how they affect the ocean around them and the environment around them. Like, as a fisherman here, you want to see this place stay pristine and beautiful and the ocean's full of fish. It's not a exploitive, take my fish and get out. And that's like, if you look across the world, that's how most of the world's fisheries are happen. You know, large foreign fleets come in, patrollers, drag up all the fish, move on to the next place. And like, you know, that's depleting your oceans. And it, like, growing up here and doing these fisheries, you just, you had a totally different outlook. It's like, if you get, if your quotas get cut back, if you can't catch as many fish, and that's to sustain the runs to make a healthier, make healthier fish populations, like, we're all about that. We're invested in this place. Trawling. Not to be mistaken, but trolling, which we learned today, is a fishing practice of dragging a net through the water along the bottom of the ocean, catching everything in its path. It breaks coral in half and creates mass amounts of wasted byproduct. It devastates not only the environment, but also the economy of local fishermen like Frank, who fish sustainably. We put the work in to build customers that are loyal, that care about it, and like they support us doing it right. And so it's, I think it's really cool to have that connection to where your fish goes. It's not just like you catch fish and you sell it and that's it, you know, you, you meet your members. The transparency of the experience today was pretty amazing. Yep. You know, just really getting to actually meet the people out there doing the fishing, like and actually listening to their struggles. I think if you're looking to buy fish as a, as a seafood lover, it's like you want the best fish, connect as close as you can to the source. Just the same as produce, same as meat. Like find that connection with the producer. And, same as pigs. Yeah, same as pigs. Exactly. Nope. Exactly. By buying the fish that's sourced responsibly. It, you get a product that tastes better, but you also ensure that tomorrow you'll be able to have some fish. Yep. I want to make sure that you know my kids can get their 
food from a place mm -hmm. like this. And right. Kudos, Chef. This is really good. Thank you. We kind of winged it, but... Yeah, it's a wing going on. <laughs> That's right, but we are on top of a mountain. We are on a mountain. You, yeah. There's bound to be something. There's bound to be something. <laughs> but this is a wild place. This is not a place that was designed for humans to, like, conquer. I think it was for the bears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a volcano right there. <laughs> This isn't, this place You've is not You've been in the Midwest a while. <laughs> Next time on Food for Thought. At this stage of processing, are you concerned about how many fish you can cut like per hour or is it just you're, you're more concerned about doing it right? The first thing is doing it right. So sure. if we're ever producing, like if we're messing up our cuts, if we're not producing good quality fish, yeah. it's like, what are we even doing all this work right. for? You have to reach your production goal, you have to get your fish to the CSF when it needs to get there. Yeah. You understand that if you're just going really slow and trying to focus on quality and fish is sitting here for three days, that it's right. going to degrade. Okay. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. You put your arms through those holes now, there you go. Perfect. Now you're a fish, buddy. <laughs>